Hi, my name is Sheila Willis of Impact Tourism, the developer of the History Check mobile app. Welcome to History Bites, your daily dose of Alberta historical trivia. Brought to you in partnership with Belt Drive Betty Media and the Canadian Motorcycle Tourism Association. You can register to answer the questions for a shot to win prizes or just take the quiz to satisfy your own brain power. Either way, we're excited to see how much of Alberta's history you really know. And yesterday's question was, while no longer there, which landmark was referenced by Peter Fiddler in 1792 and 1802? Was it A, the Lone Pine, B, Hawks Rock, or C, Fernie's Fire? And the answer is A, the Lone Pine. The Lone Pine, also known as One Pine, was one of Alberta's ancient landmarks. Peter Fiddler referenced the tree in 1792 and again in 1802 when he was at Chesterfield House. It was then that Little Bear, a Blackfoot chief, made a map for him showing the location of the tree. David Thompson was actually the first European to see and reference this tree. In his writings, it says that they came to One Pine, which was a fine tree of white pine which stood alone in a patch of aspen with no other pines for 60 or 70 miles around. He goes on to say that the tree was damaged and that during the smallpox epidemic eight years prior, a Blackfoot man had prayed to the tree to save his wife and children. After their death, he had climbed the tree and cut off the top third in anger. Together, the stories indicate that not only was one pine or lone pine a landmark, but also held cultural and religious significance to the Blackfoot people. The tree would have been along the trail on the height of land between Calgary and Red Deer. After Treaty 7 was signed at Blackfoot Crossing, the Blackfoot travelers were replaced more with traders, matey freighters, missionaries, and mounted police as they traveled back and forth between Fort Edmonton and the new settlement of Calgary. With the new use of the trail, stopping houses were soon needed. Jean Lang Langley was given a tip from the operator of the Calgary-Edmonton Stage and Mail Service about the natural landmark with a lone pine tree right beside it. He built a stopping house named Lone Pine, and while it was made a mail distribution point, it was not an official post office. It continued as a stopping point until the stage and freighting business was taken over by rail transportation. In today's world, there is a Lone Pine Hall, which is east of Didsbury, and the Lone Pine Bennett Community Hall, closer to Bowdoin. The second is much closer to the coordinates given by Alan Ronigan in his article, The Lone Pine, for the Winter 2013 Alberta History Magazine. With all of the other variations and locations referencing Lone Pine in the region, it adds to the confusion of where the tree really was. But as Mr. Ronigan says, it was evidently part of the Blackfoot navigation system and its location deserves to be remembered. And tomorrow's question is, who first applied for homesteads on the land that would become the town of Spirit River? Is it A, railway frontmen, B, American settlers, or C, land agents? Come back tomorrow for the answer and the story that goes along with it. Then we'll load you up with the next day's question. Enjoy!